There was t-shirts still in the closet. They had left a lump of what looked like still wet towels on the bathroom floor. I'm moving back to London. I was out in the English countryside for the last few months to uh, save some money during the lockdown, but now I'm going back into the city and I'm getting my own place. So I thought I would take you along the journey of finding my new flat in London. By the way, if you're planning on moving to London, then I have a special freebie for you at the end of this video. So make sure you watch the end to get it. Let me talk you through the parameters of what I was looking for in a flat location. I am looking for East London. I'm not going to say where specifically, obviously for safety and privacy reasons, but um, yeah, first time actually living in East London. I have usually lived in Southwest London. For the budget, again, I don't want to be too specific for privacy and safety reasons, but I was looking at flats between the 1300 to 1700 range for a one to two bedroom. Luckily, the renter's market in London is actually better than it usually is, which is definitely a landlord's market. And now it's more of a renter's market. So I knew that there would be some wiggle room. In terms of must-haves, it absolutely had to have an outdoor space, whether it's a balcony or its own little garden. Preferably it'd be private. Obviously with the possibility of maybe having to go back into another lockdown, I just can't really bear the fact that I didn't have like my own little outdoor space that I could be in. I don't want something that's a lower ground or a basement flat because I need light for my personal sanity, but also because I film YouTube videos for my work in my flat. So if there's not enough light, then it makes it really difficult for me to film. Unfurnished, I definitely wanted a place that didn't have furniture in it. I feel like furnished places so often just have really cheap yucky, mismatched Ikea furniture. And I wanted to bring my own things in and start investing in my own pieces that I could hold on to for a long time. And also I just wanted to put my own stamp on it. I'm kind of sick of Ikea stuff. And ideally I'm looking for some place that wouldn't be more than a half a mile from some kind of tube or train station. Those are the must, must, must haves. And then I have some nice to haves. The first being security. This is something I really want to prioritize. I have had some problems recently and then also over the last few years of, um, I don't know if stalker is the right word, but people, men just, anyway, I'm not gonna go into it. This is in nice to haves and not must haves because at the prices that I'm looking for, security in terms of having somebody who is sitting at a desk on the door, like concierge and any extra security elements, um, it's hard to find buildings that I could afford um, in that range. A dishwasher. I have lived in flats without dishwashers and I have lived in ones with dishwashers and I was much happier when I had a dishwasher. And storage space. Ideally flats that have like built-in closets and built-in wardrobes. It's not a deal breaker if flats don't have those, but it definitely helps if they do because then I don't have to get my own furniture to make up for storage that's missing. Right, so my search began on the popular apps for rental listings, which are Zoopla, Rightmove, and Open Rent. Rightmove and Zoopla are very similar. They often have the same listings on them. However, Open Rent is specifically for properties that have private landlords that will be handling everything and you won't be going through agencies. So there are some properties on Open Rent that you won't find on the other apps. I began looking seriously about six weeks out from my desired move-in date. And as soon as I would see something pop up on one of the apps, I would reach out to the agency, give them all my information, and say I was interested in potentially viewing the property after I had a video tour and got some questions answered. The annoying thing about working with agencies is that when you're going through this flat hunting process, they all will call you up and you have to repeat the same story over and over again of what your budget is, what you're looking for, why you're moving, blah, blah, blah. It gets repetitive, but then you're in their system and if something pops up before it goes onto one of these apps, they can call you and you can go see it before it gets listed for everybody else. But once I had a couple of properties that looked good and I wanted to go do a final in-person tour, because obviously with COVID, we're trying to do as little in-person tours as possible, especially when there's tenants still in the property. I would lump them together into one day so I could go see them without having to go in and out of London a bunch of times. I ended up doing this 
three times, I think. So I'm gonna show you all of the properties I ended up looking at. Flat number one, I was so excited about this because there was good security in this building. It's a new build, so it looks looked quite nice in the pictures. The balcony had a great view, which I'm not gonna show you again for privacy. However, when I got to the property, it was a complete tip, as they say here, a complete mess. Apparently the previous tenants had like up sticks and moved back to Australia pretty quickly, but it means that I saw the flat with all of their crap everywhere. There, like, there was t-shirts still in the closet. They had left a lump of what looked like still wet towels on the bathroom floor. So I had to really look beyond that and all of that stuff to look at the bones of the property. But they were pretty good. There was a huge closet in the bedroom and a huge closet in the hallway. It was spacious for one person. Again, I loved the view from the balcony, but the condition of the flat wasn't as good as I had hoped it would be. The floors had like a lot of damage and the kitchen cabinets had some damage damage and the bathroom looked like there was some damp in there as well. Flat number two, I wanted to go see because it was on the 11th floor and it had incredible views from its balcony. So I went to this building, but when I got there, the flat itself was a bit rough. It didn't really look like it had been taken care of. It was kind of old looking, but for, and for being so high up in the air, it really lacked windows and it just didn't look very good. They also had some like really gross furniture left in the flat that apparently the landlords would have been okay Okay, to get rid of if a decent offer was put in, but I just really wasn't keen about this place. Flat three was actually the next week and I didn't film the first flat that I originally had gone to see because they didn't even show me the actual flat. I saw one upstairs and it just was like really overpriced. But the agent said, I actually have one that's next door that I think you might like better. So let's have a look. And I did film that one. The property had recently been redone. It was looked really nice, really fresh and clean. It was modern. It had actually decent light, even though there wasn't a ton of windows. There was a teeny little internal balcony. So that does check off the outside space element for me. The bedroom had huge built-in closets. The bathroom was nice. The living space wasn't very big, but that was okay. I really like this one. I can deal with small spaces. I don't have that much stuff. And if it's small space, I expect to be paying less. So I knew I could definitely, even though it was overpriced, I could definitely put in an offer that was lower and would save me some money. But right before we were about to leave, I found out that the fridge was just this little like under counter fridge. And that's really difficult for me because I do actually cook a lot, not well, but I do cook. So I need to have like a proper fridge. Flat four was this cute little flat that I had been eyeing up actually for quite a long time on Right Move. It was in a great location, but kind of between all of these like really great local things. I knew I was going to like it, but I needed to see it in person. So I went and the landlord was actually there and she was so lovely and the flat had this cute little balcony off the kitchen. The kitchen was a good size. The whole flat was done up really nicely on the inside. And it was, you could tell like she had lived there for a while because she just kind of, everything looked really fresh and clean. The problem was that the living room and the bedroom were just a little bit too small for me. After this flat, I was supposed to go see another one. And then as I was like five minutes from the flat to go see it, and I had been so excited for this flat, the agent called me and said, the landlord just told me that they've accepted another offer. So that was kind of a bummer, but that is how this goes. Okay, fast forward to next week. I have a couple more viewings booked in. And at this point I had seen a bunch of properties, a couple also that I haven't even talked about because I didn't get videos or they just weren't worth it. I was at that point where I was like tired of viewing properties, getting discouraged. They had announced that the lockdowns were going to start lifting. So I knew that demand for the areas that I was looking at was going to increase significantly. And I was worried I'd kind of like missed that point of getting those better deals. But I found a couple of properties that looked really great on open rent. So I booked to go see them on the same day. So this is flat five. It was actually in the same building as one of the other flats that I've looked at. And it was building that I really quite liked. So I was excited to go see it. And when I did, I was really happy with it. It was the same layout. It had two closets, a nice view from the teeny little balcony. There was a dishwasher. 
very secure building. The couple of things I wasn't keen on was I thought the price was a little bit high and also it didn't have high ceilings, which obviously everybody loves high ceilings, especially in a small flat. And the final flat that I saw, flat six, I was quite surprised at how spacious the flat was. It only had a little bit of built-in storage, so I was going to have to add wardrobes and different things, uh, different types of furniture to add storage but it had really good space. This sounds like a weird thing to be excited about, but there was a door to a balcony um, on one side, but then also on the other side of the flat in the kitchen, there was also a window that gets a ton, or it would get a ton of light, which means that flat is very bright during the day which is great for me. And it makes it feel more spacious having that extra window. Also, I found out it's pet friendly, which is interesting for the future. And the location was really good. Oh, and the price was really good too. Those were all the flats I saw. Can you guess which ones I chose or made an offer on? I will tell you, obviously. I made an offer on flat one, despite the mess, but I completely lowballed it because of the state of the flat and it had been on the market for a while. My lowball offer had been rejected, then I bumped it up a bit, but it was still under asking. That was rejected, and then eventually it was off the market, and I was kind of bummed because after a couple of weeks, I was like, oh, I actually would have paid for full price for that. So I was a bit disappointed. But then I offered on flat number five, and that offer was accepted. I actually offered below asking, and that was accepted, and this flat, is a bit better than the other one. So I'm happy I ended up waiting and going for the one that I ended up getting. I'm filming this less than a week before I'll be moving there. I feel really happy because this is gonna be the first place that I've lived in on my own. The last couple of years, as some of you know, have been extremely difficult for me and I feel like getting this flat on my own is going to be a fresh new start. Not having to deal with housemates and just to be able to have that independence of doing honestly whatever the f I want with the place. <laughs> After living in house shares for almost two years, I'm like, ugh. If you're still in the house share situation, you'll get there, I promise I was there too you will get there. Okay, so for that freebie, if you're moving to London, I have a free moving to London checklist and it has everything that you need to do before you move from abroad and after you actually get to London. So you make sure you cover all your bases for getting you set up here and you can get that for free by clicking the link popping up in the corner or in the description box of the video. This video is part of my Back to London series where I show you my big move back to London into my own place. You can click one of the boxes popping up here to watch another video in the series. See you in the next one.